Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Welcome learners. My name is Stephen Kariungi and we continue with our topic of discussion. And uh, we are discussing uh, reproduction in plants and animals. So during our last lesson, we discussed the menstrual cycle and uh, whereby we saw the activities that occur during menstruation, follicular phase, ovulation, and the luteal phase. So those are the main stages that constitute uh, the menstrual cycle. Now, uh, we discussed the role of um, uh, follicle-stimulating hormone, estrogen, and luteinizing hormone. And uh, we say that luteinizing hormone uh, is the hormone that stimulates the maturation and the bursting of the graphene follicle to release the ovum. So it's the one that causes ovulation. And then the remains, after that, we refer to them as corpus luteum, and they produce another hormone that we call progesterone. So we want to find out what is the role of progesterone or progesterone during menstrual cycle. So we should not confuse with the role of progesterone during pregnancy because we say that it's the hormone that maintains the pregnancy. But at this point, we want to discuss its role in menstrual cycle. So, first of all, we can say that progesterone is uh, secreted by the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum. And it stimulates... One, the thickening of the uterine wall. We called that uterine wall as the endometrium. So it's the one that stimulates the thickening of the uterine wall, the endometrium, in preparation in preparation of implantation in preparation for in preparation for implantation of the blastocyst so what we are saying basically is that uh, progesterone is secreted by the corpus luteum and it stimulates one thickening of the uterine wall also known as the endometrium in preparation for implantation so it makes the uterine wall thicker so that after fertilization then implantation of the blastocyst can happen there or the blastocyst which is a mass of cells it can sink into that wall, into the uterine wall, so that now growth and development of the embryo can commence. Uh, estrogen also stimulates increased blood supply to the endometrium. It stimulates increased blood supply to the endometrium so that when this blastocyst is implanted, it can get uh, the nutrients, oxygen through the blood. So the blood supply of that area needs to be increased by having more blood capillaries uh, that will uh, supply nutrients uh, to the blastocyst or to the embryo at that stage. And then, uh, see, progesterone also inhibits the release, it prevents the release of follicle-stimulating hormone and a luteinizing hormone 
by pituitary gland. It inhibits the pituitary gland from rele releasing the follicle stimulating and the uh, luteinizing hormone. And the reason for that is because if progesterone level remains high or the wall remains thickened, that means that uh, there is pregnancy. There is pregnancy and therefore we do, not we do not need another follicle to develop and we do not need another ovulation to take place. So the uh, high levels of progesterone indicates that uh, pregnancy is there and therefore uh, uh, the follicle stimulating and luteinizing hormone should not, uh, should not uh, be produced. However, if if uh, fertilization occurs if fertilization occurs just not put however so you're saying that uh, if fertilization occurs the levels of progesterone remain high. And the uterine wall remains thickened. The uterine wall remains thickened, indicating pregnancy. This indicates pregnancy. So that means that uh, fertilization occurs, the level of progesterone remains high, the uterine wall remains thickened, indicating pregnancy. Then, however, if no fertilization occurs, if no fertilization occurs, The corpus luteum disintegrates. Remember the corpus uh, luteum is the one that was uh, producing progesterone. And if it disintegrates, then the level of progesterone will drop. Disintegrates, hence a drop in the level of progesterone. And a drop in the level of progesterone ensure that, ensures that this thickened wall does not remain thick. It will peel off. Hence a drop in the level of progesterone leading to peeling off of uterine wall. Peeling off of utera in wall, causing menstruation. Causing menstruation. So menstruation, as we saw earlier, menstruation, as we saw earlier, is accompanied by discharge of blood that is the blood supply that had increased it now has to come out uh, by discharge of blood and tissue debris discharge of blood and tissue debris which is called menses so menses is that discharge of blood and tissue uh, debris as a result of failure for fertilization to take place but if fertilization occurs then there is no menstruation the level of progesterone remains high the uterine wall does not peel off it remains thick 
and the pregnancy continues. But if no fertilization occurs and the wall had thickened, uh, the corpus luteum will disintegrate, the wall will peel off, and there, there will be discharge of blood and tissue debris uh, that uh, we are calling menses, which is uh, an indication of uh, menstruation. So there is also one more thing that we shall mention here that we call menopause. And this is a period when menstruation and fertility stops. The period when uh, menstruation and fertility stops due to the absence or inadequate follicle cells. So we don't have enough follicle cells to develop into ova. So that period is referred to as menopause and menstruation and fertility stops and uh, there is no ova that is produced. There is no eggs that are produced. And these ones occurs between the ages of 40 and 50. And you can also say that menopause is accompanied by, it shows the symptoms, There is vaginal dryness, uh, something else that occurs is a, a random temperature changes, and psychological Stress, there is uh, bones become soft, something that is called osteoporosis. So all those are some of the uh, symptoms that are seen or witnessed during menopause and at that point a female is not able to bear children even after uh, even after sexual intercourse because you're saying that uh, uh, there is depletion of the eggs so fertilization will not take place and this one occurs between the ages of 40 and 50 and of course uh, it may even prolong it may even uh, come later it doesn't have to fall within that age some people have had children even at the age of 50 and so on and so forth. So we're going to have a, an assignment based on uh, the role of progesterone. So the assignment, we have three questions. Number one, State three roles of progesterone during menstrual cycle. Two, why does menstruation occur if no fertilization has taken place? And uh, number three, what is menopause? So we'll stop there until next time. Goodbye. <music>